Seed, the incorruptible, the ever living seed of the word of Almighty God. Let your word pierce our hearts. Let your word bring forth change and transformation, mighty God. I thank you, Lord, for your presence here. I thank you, Lord, that you've already prepared our hearts to receive this word this morning. So, Lord, we ask that you will move by your spirit, move by your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, give us ears to hear all that the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Father, we are careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And the church of Jesus Christ say, Amen, amen and Amen. Yes, if we're putting our hands together for the Lord, let us give him a lusty round of applause. You may have your seats this morning. It is such an awesome thing to minister in an atmosphere like this. An atmosphere of expectation. An atmosphere where we know that the Spirit of the Lord is here. He's going to do awesome things in our midst. Amen. About five years ago, was the year 2019, a man took his dog, Lucky, for a stroll. <laughs> Just outside of the city called Bendigo. How many of you have heard of that city? Bendigo. It's located about two hours to the north of Melbourne, Australia. And joining him on this stroll that they were taking with their dog were his two daughters. So they were walking along the path. And one of the daughters accidentally kicked a piece of metal that was lying on the ground. And although everyone continued walking, she stopped down to take a look at what did my foot come into contact with. And as she looked down, she noticed that it was glistening a little bit. So she said to her father, Daddy, is this gold? When he heard that, his ears perked up. He, he went back, he stopped, he looked down and he said, but you know what? I think it might be gold. So they were looking for a jeweler, but they were unable to find one. So they went to a grocery store, and they weighed this fist-sized chunk of metal. And when they put it on the scale, it was more than 20 ounces. 20 ounces is about one and a quarter pounds. So this thing had some serious weight. One and a quarter pounds, a chunk. Of gold, and since then it was confirmed to be solid gold. Imagine that you walking and you see a big piece of solid gold on the ground. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, the father said that the timing couldn't be better in making this significant find for the family because they were going through some rough times. He said, although they had discussed holding on to the lucky find, eventually they sold it to clear off their expenses. Guess how much they sold that thing for? Not a few million. <laughs> no, not so much. $24,000. $24,000. Imagine that. You walking down the street and you see $24,000 waiting for you to pick it up. Well, that was the situation. And this accidental discovery this accidental finding of treasure is what we will see in our text today. Except, in our text, it's not the people who found the treasure. Instead, it's the treasure that found the people. And what a find it was. And when you have been found by Jesus, He can redeem your past and rewrite your future. You all heard what I said? When Jesus lays a hold of you, he can redeem your past and rewrite your future. Let's see now how Jesus goes about finding people. Let's see how he rewrites destinies. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel according to John. John chapter 1, we are reading from verse 43. 
to 51. John chapter 1, from verse 43 to 51. I will read, you can follow in your Bibles. When you're found it, give me a big amen. 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 It says, the following day, Jesus wanted, notice, he wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip. Somebody say found. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael opened up his eyes. He said unto him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, And the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing. And today the title for this message comes straight from the text. Come and see. That is what Jesus is saying to each and every one of us this morning. Come and see. And you may say, come and see what? Well, there are three actions that I want us to see that are nestled within this text. That only Jesus can do to those who are found by him. And the first of these actions is this. Jesus renews your character to help you fulfill your potential. Jesus renews your character to help you fulfill your potential. And in this opening chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus found his first five disciples. The first two were Andrew and possibly John or his brother James. And after their leader, John the Baptist, had made this profound statement about Jesus, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. These two guys, they shifted from the Baptist circle and they joined the Jesus movement. Somehow, when they heard that phrase, Behold the Lamb of God, it captured their attention. It captured their imagination. Who is this fella? Who is this Lamb of God? Let's follow him. And they pondered deeply and intently about that statement. So much so, it moved them to action. So they were thoughtful. And there comes a time in our lives when we need to ponder and reflect on who Jesus is. The Lamb of God. We need to ponder on that such that it moves us into action. This is exactly what Andrew and the other disciple did. When they came to Jesus, Jesus asked them a question. He says, what do you want? And this is a question that each of us needs to answer. What do you want? What moves you? Is it material things? Is it some relationship? Is it entertainment? Is it career? What drives you in this life? 
That is the question that Jesus is putting to you and I this morning. Because he alone can answer the big questions of life. He has the answers that we are seeking. But there was that third disciple in the text that encountered Jesus. And that was Peter. And interestingly enough, after Jesus founded these first two disciples... Andrew went and he found Peter. Peter was his brother. And he brought Je uh, Peter to Jesus. And as Peter was strolling in, Jesus said to him, I see you, Simon. I see you. Your name means unstable, unpredictable, unreliable. But when I am finished with you, Simon, not only will I give you a new name, but I'm going to make you like a rock. He says, from now on, you will be called Cephas, a rock. I'm going to bring stability to your life. And that is what God wants to do for you and I. When he, you come to him, he says, I see you. I see your challenges. I see your issues. I see your pain. I see your struggles. But when I am finished with you, I'm going to reform your character. I'm going to smoothen those rough edges. I'm going to bring stability to your life. That is what Jesus can do. But Jesus doesn't only transform the thoughtful and the unstable. He also finds the reluctant. And he gives them firm initiative. That's why he went back to find Philip. And having found the Lord, the others, they wanted to press on. But if you notice in the very first verse of the text, verse 43, Jesus said, guys, slow down. I need to return to Galilee. You notice it said, Jesus wanted to go back to Galilee. He went back. Why did he go back? To find Philip. You see, Philip was reluctant. He was contented to follow Jesus from afar. And today, there are some people, they are reluctant. They believe in Jesus, but they only follow Jesus from afar. They don't want to commit. They don't want to get too involved in the program of the church. Nah, I am contented to sit right in the back. Falling off at the back. And when you follow from afar, you become distant and disconnected from what Jesus is doing. As a result, you end up contributing to the weight instead of carrying the weight. Jesus is looking for people who will carry the weight. He says, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He's looking for workers. He's looking for people who will carry the weight and not contribute to the weight. And so Jesus says to you, don't be slow to believe, but follow me. And finally, in the text... There was a cynical person. And Jesus provides supernatural revelation to the cynical. Nathaniel was the cynical one in the text. And when Philip, Philip told him that we found the Messiah, the first thing to come out of his mouth was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He was cynical. He didn't believe that anything good could come out of Nazareth because Nazareth had developed such a bad reputation that Nathaniel believed that nothing good could come from that place. And that's why Philip said to him, come and see. Come and see. Come and see. And I'm sure if you, if I were to call certain names <laughs> of certain areas in this country, Areas that have developed a reputation. <laughs> I ain't calling any name, but I'm sure if I mention certain names, 
Some of you would agree with Nathaniel. You would say, can anything good come out of that place? But what I want you to see here is that with Jesus, all things are possible. All things are possible. God can turn around the worst place into a prized place. God could turn around the worst person into the best person. Ask the Apostle Paul, Amen. who was converted from Saul. In fact, Saul, Paul wrote in the Bible, he says, I was the greatest sinner. I was the greatest sinner. Persecuting the church, killing Christians. And he said, if God could save me and turn me around into the greatest apostle, Paul was the greatest apostle. He wrote more than half of the New Testament. Proclaim and carry the gospel to the then known world. What a mighty man of God. But he was the most vile sinner. So if God could do that for Paul, could you imagine what he could do in your life? With God, all things are possible. He can transform even the cynics and the skeptics in our midst and provide new hope. This leads me to the second action I want to identify in this text. And it's this. Jesus redeems your past to provide new hope. Jesus redeems your past to provide new hope. I want you to notice a statement to Nathaniel in verse 48. He said, before Philip called you, I saw you. I saw you when you were standing up under the fig tree. When you were shooting the breeze, I saw you. You think I ain't seen you, but I saw you, Phil Philip, Nathaniel. I want to say to you that Jesus sees you. Wherever you are located, wherever you have been, Jesus sees you. In fact, he sees your past. He sees your past indiscretions, your past hurts, your past disappointments. He sees it all. Everything is naked and open to Jesus. He sees everything there is to see about you. And because he sees it all, he knows it all. And because he knows it all, he can redeem it all all what a powerful revelation only jesus could redeem your past that's what he did for the disciples they were unlettered fishermen all they knew to do was to catch fish but after jesus found them they became fishers of men they literally turned the world upside down and here we are talking about them 2,000 years later. Allow yourself to be found by Jesus. And you'd be amazed as to what he can do to redeem your past. Now, when we use that term, redeem our past, what do we mean? Does it mean that Jesus is going to take away your past? Does it mean that Jesus is going to undo? He's going to use liquid paper? And wipe out your past? <laughs> Does it mean that he's going to ignore and pretend that your past doesn't exist? No. You say then, what does it mean to redeem? The word redeem means to buy back. To restore. So how does Jesus restore our past if our past is in the past? How does he do that? Well, he does it by giving new meaning to our past. Jesus redeems our past by giving new meaning to our past. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, when you look back on your past and you see hardship and trials, what does Jesus see? You know what he sees? He sees testimonies. Of divine faithfulness. Testimonies. That's what Jesus sees. You look back and you see pressure. You see hard times. You know what Jesus sees? Testimonies of God's divine faithfulness. You know why? The fact that you are here is a testimony of the goodness of God. Of the grace of God. He brought you through. 
some through the water some of you went through some serious deep waters you're treading water some through the fires and then some of you had to go through the floods but all through the blood what an awesome god he is he brings us through he is upholding us in his right hand of power he's bringing us through some of us will have to go through but you know what i rather go through knowing that jesus is in my boat because when jesus is in your boat you are going to make it to the other side i said when jesus is in your boat you may go through some storms you may have to deal with some turbulence but you're gonna make it through to the other side so when you look back at your past and you see hardship you see pressure you see adversity jesus looks at that he flips the script he said that is a testimony of the goodness of god of the graciousness of god you don't know sometimes sometimes the enemy intended to kill you to out your light to cause you to crash and get an accident to sick to give you sickness and throw you down but you're here today i said you're here today so god redeems our past by giving new meaning new meaning to our past experiences and then some of you when you look back at your past you see missed opportunities you ever you ever you ever do something or miss something and say boy if i did only know if i did if i did if i did if i did do this if i did do that if i did do this missed opportunities and you regret it but you know when jesus look back you know what he sees he sees new opportunities for second chances you know why he is the god of the second and the third chance he's able he's more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or imagine he can re he can recreate situations and circumstances he can cause you to come into new opportunities he is the god of second chances he is the god of divine connections he knows how to bring the right people into your life at the right time to create the right opportunities somebody said he's the slowest person who is always on time he's never late god can create new opportunities he can open doors where no doors exist as the children of israel when they were facing the red sea the egyptians were behind them mountains on either side i can imagine when they look back and they see the dust and they hear the sound you can imagine the panic what did god tell moses tell the people to go forward that's what god is saying go forward go forward i will create a pathway even in the red sea that's what god is able to do so when you look back and you see missed opportunities god sees new opportunities because he is the god of the second chance he's able to make all things new so in a real sense jesus redeems our past by giving new meaning to our experiences this is where the hope comes in because all of a sudden you have new opportunities to make your life count by doing something significant for the lord that's what it is this is what happened to the disciples before jesus came into their lives their lives were meandering into a mundane anticlimax that lacked significance they were fishermen but when jesus encountered them there was a spectacular transformation on the personal level that literally changed the course of human history historians have written about them the bible says that these men turn the world 
upside down unlettered fishermen in the book of Acts <laughs> after Peter and John had healed the lame man it was a notable healing the Sanhedrin realized they said despite all our efforts these we can't stop these fellas bring them in here let me threaten them they say in whose name you did that when they saw the boldness the courage the faith they said these guys are unlettered fishermen but we take note of their boldness we take note of their courage and then the scripture says for they were with jesus you see when you are found by jesus your life changes Amen. you cannot come into the presence of jesus and remain the same Amen. they were different they were bold they were powerful they could not be stopped when jesus lays hold of your life you will not be no one will be able to stop you this is what happened because jesus is able to rewrite your history rewrite your history and give you a life of significance a life of purpose this leads me to the third and final point this morning and it's this jesus doesn't only redeem our past he doesn't only renew our character but he rewrites our future to manifest the supernatural this God that we're talking about, he rewrites your future. You say, how does he do that? Well, the answer is simple. He does it with a word. A rhema word to be exact. What is a rhema word? It is a word spoken for the moment. Remember, how did God create the heavens and the earth? With a word. The Bible says, in the beginning, God, what? Said, let there be light. He said, he spoke things into existence with a rhema word. A word for the moment. A word that is pregnant with power, with possibility, with potential. It says, and the spirit of the Lord moved over the surface of the deep. And God brought order out of chaos. God can bring order out of your life with the spoken word. Jesus knows how and when to release the right words into our lives. Words that strip off those things that bind and keep us in bondage. That's exactly what he did for Nathaniel. Not once, but three times in this text. He spoke into the life of Nathaniel. And each time Jesus spoke into his life, there was a shift. Shifted him closer to the future that God had ordained for him to walk in. Let's see. Let's see how Jesus released these words into Nathaniel's life. And the first word that Jesus spoke into his life was a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge. Jesus revealed something about Nathaniel that he had no he had no way of knowing except for the, the moving of the spirit. And as Nathaniel approached in verse 47 part B, Jesus said, as he was walking up, he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. That was a word of knowledge. Jesus was revealing some qualities about his life that he had no way of knowing. He had never met Nathaniel before. And sometimes God could release words of knowledge. Words about you that only you know. You see, what God is in the business of doing is laying the hearts of men bare so that he can change them, so that he can transform them, so that he can move them into this future that he has for them. And so when Jesus spoke that first word, there was a shift 
Nathaniel said, but how do you know me? Jesus had gotten his attention. And I'm sure Nathaniel was wondering, but who tell him that? How he know that? But Jesus wasn't finished. He released a second word. Another word of knowledge that pushed him a little closer again to this future that Jesus had for him. He says, before Philip called you, I saw you when you were standing under the fig tree. How did Jesus know that? How did he know he was standing under the fig tree before Philip called him? A word of knowledge. Well, that one really got Nathaniel. He went from being a skeptic and he became a believer all in the space of a few minutes. I tell you, God's word is so powerful that it can strip off all of your doubts and turn you into a believer. Turn you into an evangelist. The word of God is powerful. It is quick. It is sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It can pierce and divide spirit and soul. When the word hit Nathaniel, did you notice his response? He said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Look at the transformation. This was the same man who a few minutes earlier, he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. Come and see. Jesus is saying to all these skeptics, all them naysayers, all them people that say, I hear about this Jesus so many years. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. And boy, did Nathaniel see. His eyes probably opened up big, 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 big. <laughs> How this man see me, boy? And let's examine this for a minute. What changed? What changed in Nathaniel's experience? I could tell you. The word. The word was released into his life. The word was released over his life. A rhema word. A word spoken for the moment. And the rest was history. So all it takes to transform your life is one word from God. One word. Because the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It could pierce and divide. The word of God could cut away and cut off all of the fluff and all of the stuff that binds and contaminates your life. All of those things that clutter in your life. The word of God could cut it all away. That's the power of the word. It could rewrite your future in one fell swoop. But Jesus still wasn't finished with Nathaniel. And I want to say to you that Jesus isn't finished with you. He still has words that he wants to speak into your life. Words that could redeem your past. Words that could rewrite your future. But unlike the earlier words, the later words aren't words of knowledge. You see, Jesus has an arsenal of different types of words. Different types of words. Not every word is the same word. Not every word is the same type of word it depends on what god wants to do in your life you see words of knowledge will only propel you so far but if you are to be catapulted way into the future way into the purpose and the destiny that god has for you you're going to need to hear a different kind of word you're going to need to hear a word with a futuristic dimension to it. In other words, you'll need to hear a sharp prophetic word. A word that can slice through the maze and the haze of your ignorance. You need to hear a word that will position you at the thresholds of the supernatural. This is what we're talking about. We serve a supernatural God. We make no apologies. 
He has a supernatural God. He has a supernatural identity and character. That is who we are. We are a supernatural people. And so, this is the kind of word that Jesus released into Nathaniel's life that pushed him into the future. It was a supernatural word. It was a prophetic word. It's recorded for us in the final verse of our text. Verse 51. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, most assuredly. In other words, assures the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Assuredly, I say to you, hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This was an unusual word. It was a prophetic word. This didn't happen yet. He says hereafter. In other words, at some point in time in the future, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see the heavens open. And you're going to see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What a powerful word. Amen. Let's take a while to break down this. It was an unusual word. And what Jesus was doing here, he was revealing a prophetic picture. He was painting a prophetic picture of how God is going to release divine favor and blessing into our lives through the ministry of angels. Do you know that angels are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation? How many of you have ever gone to a fancy dandy restaurant? <laughs> you go on to a fancy dandy restaurant, you're gone in. And as soon as you step through the door, who could meet you? Who comes to meet you? The waiter or the waitress. They come to meet you. What do they do? When they meet you, what do they do? They put you to sit down. They make you comfortable. They show you the menus. Would you like some water? And when you go to them fancy dancey thing, they just bring out bread and all kind of different delicacies. They make you feel right. So nice. You feel expensive. And you feel important. You feel like a bourgeoisie boy. Whoa. This treatment. <laughs> They lay out a nice menu, three-course meal, you, you know. What would you like to start off with, sir? Look at our menu. Right? And then you ask them, well, what do you recommend? Oh, we have this and this and so on and so on. And they tell you, and you make your choice. And then they say, what do you want to order for your main course? And then, you know, they tell you, well, you know, how was the meal? Do you need anything, sir? Do you need anything, ma'am? Would you need a, an additional drink? Would you need some condiments? Then they bring the dessert. And you leave that place feeling so important. But what's the point I'm making here? Throughout your time there, you were made to feel like what? Royalty. Because of the service. You had these waiters serving you. This is what angels do. They are your spiritual waiters. They are coming to serve you. You didn't know? That's what Jesus says. They are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. You are important in the eyes of God. He has sent these waiters, these spiritual waiters to serve you. That is what angels do. And Jesus was giving a picture of how this is going to work. He says these angels... These spiritual waiters, they are going to ascend and descend on the Son of Man. That is so significant. And you know what Jesus was doing here? He was linking himself to Jacob's ladder. Remember, we spoke on that a couple weeks ago. Jacob 
came into this certain place. He didn't know he was entering the house of God. It was a certain place. He set up shop to sleep for the night. And it says while he rested on this rock, he rested his head on a rock, he had this dream. And in the dream he saw a ladder, a huge ladder that was set up on the earth that stretched all the way into heaven. And he said he saw God standing over the ladder and there were angels ascending and descending on this ladder. Question, why are angels ascending and descending on this ladder? And incidentally, the ladder, Jesus says, I am the ladder. Because he is the one that has breached that gulf between heaven and earth. Remember, when, God, when man sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, the relationship with heaven was broken off. And so what Jesus did, he came to redeem man. He came to repair the breach. So he is that ladder that connects heaven and earth through his sacrifice. And so what Jesus is saying, now that I have reestablished that divine connection with heaven, your spiritual waiters, they are going to ascend and descend on my finished work but why are they ascending and descending remember we said according to hebrews 1 14 they are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation so when you pray you energize angels you didn't know that's why jesus says men ought always to pray and not faint so when you pray they take your prayers and they ascend from the earth straight up into the third heaven but they don't just ascend you remember when daniel prayed the bible says daniel from the first day you prayed the angel came and the answer was sent angels just move real quick eh? quick lightning speed whoosh whoosh that's how fast they move in so from the first day the bible says daniel the first day you prayed the request was received in heaven because his angels them fellas moving at the speed of light whoosh they gone up into heaven with the answer but guess what has happened sometimes you see that corridor that it is move on from heaven to earth now there are three heavens the heaven that we know when we look up outside we see the sky at the first heaven there's a heaven above that called the starry or the stellar heaven that heaven is where Satan and his demonic entities, that is where they are pulling the strings. Because the Bible says Satan is the God of this world system. That is where they are pulling the strings, controlling what is happening. He is the God of this world system. They operate from the second heaven. And then there is another heaven above that, called the third heaven, where the throne of God is. So when you pray, the angel takes your request whoosh they ascend on the finished work of jesus pass through the first heaven pass through the second heaven into the third heaven present your request and then when god says i'm gonna answer the answer is sent so now they have to pass through come back from the third to the second to get to you but guess what has happened sometimes when they get to the second heaven you have some fellas called principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They have set up their thrones and their, their dominions in the second heaven. And so there is warfare, fighting, angels and demons fighting in the second heaven. What they're trying to do is derail. What they're trying to do is to block. What they're trying to do is to divert your blessings, your favor from coming to you. And this time... You praying and you're not seeing the answers and you say, but God, you don't answer prayer or what? God, God, we, we are praying to you. Sometimes what is happening is there's a battle taking place in the second heaven. And this is why your prayers are so important. You need to pray through. 
pray true like Daniel prayed true. Because Daniel prayed true. 21 days after, the archangel Michael was sent. All of that is being triggered by Daniel's prayer on the altar. You see how powerful your prayers is? Your prayers energizes the angels. So guess what? If you're not praying, waiting happening. Nothing. Nothing happening. Angels not moving and acting on your behalf. They're not coming to serve you. And that's equivalent like you going to the big fancy restaurant. <laughs> Nobody come to see you. Nobody come. <laughs> you stand up there. You're going to stand up there for an hour. You're waiting. Nobody come to you. Because you're not praying. And this is what happens in the spirit. You're not praying. So nothing happening. You are winning no battles in the heavens because you're not praying. This is why we need to pray. And so this is what Jesus was revealing to Nathaniel. Was giving him an insight into what God is going to do in and through his life. Through the ministry of angels. This was the future that he wanted to push uh, Nathaniel into. And Jesus was saying, Nathaniel, in effect, I have come to make all of that possible. All of that divine favor. All of that spiritual delivery. That spiritual male system. That is what Jesus has come into in, to in, in act. He says, I am the missing piece. I am the one that is going to breach the gap between heaven and earth that will allow this to happen. See how important Jesus is? Through my sacrifice, Jesus says, I am going to make it possible for angels to be ministering spirits to you. That's how you're going to receive divine favor. That's how you're going to receive your breakthrough. That's how you're going to receive everything that God wants to release into your life. It is through my sacrifice. I am the missing link in your life. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, this future I'm pushing you through. You're not just going to benefit from the ministry of angels, but Jesus says you're going to see the heavens open. So he said to Nathaniel, you will see the heavens open. In other words, what Jesus is saying, it is my desire for you to encounter the supernatural. And Jesus says, the supernatural is within your reach. It is on the other side of a prophetic word. God says, there is a prophetic word for you here today. And as I conclude this message, this morning, Jesus says to you, as he says to his first disciples 2,000 years ago, come and see come and see what I have in store for you. Come and see what I have in store for your life. Come and see. He says, come and see that I can renew your character and help you fulfill your potential. Come and see that I can redeem your past and give you new hope. Come and see that I can rewrite your future and manifest the supernatural come and see let's stand in the presence of the Lord this morning we give you praise we give you honor here as in heaven we give God praise could, a, could every hand be lifted the presence of the Lord is here the spirit of the Lord is here we give God all the praise all the honor the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the lord is here the evidence is all That the Spirit of the Lord is here.
atmosphere. Come on, add it up again. The atmosphere is changing now. Come on, with uplifted hands. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Come on. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place. Fill all hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we Your 
So if you need a touch from the Lord, you are going through a situation. You need a touch, you need a word. You need a word from God, you need direction. I want you to come to the front this morning. Spirit of the Lord is here. You need a touch, you need a word, you need guidance, you need direction. Spirit of the Lord is here. Heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done, here as in heaven. The atmosphere is changing now. Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is The Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. The evidence is all around. And the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place. Yasmin, I hear the word head, 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 and the enemy is attacking your mind. God says the enemy is firing fiery darts at your mind. God says He has given us the helmet of salvation. You have to put on and ensure that that helmet of salvation is upon your head to repel the fiery darts of the enemy. God says he's releasing his peace upon you now. All of those thoughts, thoughts and imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pull down right now. And the peace of God is going to guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. I declare that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment we condemn in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the Lord, guard her mind. Guard her mind, Lord. Insulate her mind. God says, Not all the thoughts that are in your mind originate from me. And so there is a need for discernment. God says you need to take authority over every thought, over every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So Father, 
Father, thank you for the spirit of discernment that is coming upon Sister Yasmin right now. Spirit of discernment. A spirit of courage. The peace of God. And the Lord says, think upon those things that have a good report. Think of those things that are praiseworthy. Think upon those things that bring honor and glory to my name. Think upon these things. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the peace of God to guard your heart and mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mantle her Lord with your peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Veronica. And all that you are doing in her life. Every spirit of heaviness every weight break your power right now in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you that your anointing is here to break yokes and chains and fetters right now let the weight of your glory rest upon sister Veronica right now in the name of Jesus I break every yoke every spirit of heaviness Lord, you said that you give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I release the garment of praise and worship right now upon you, Sister Veronica. The garment of praise. God says, let there be praise in your mouth. God says, let there be worship in your mouth. Offer up a sacrifice of praise and worship because the spirit of the lord inhabits the praises of his people and sister veronica the lord says that you need to rise up rise up with a spirit of violence because the violent take the kingdom by force rise up with a holy violence mantle her lord with a spirit of holy violence because we know that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Rise up, rise up with words of praise and worship on your tongue. And as you begin to worship, as you begin to praise, the spirit of the Lord will inhabit that place wherever you are. And that spirit of heaviness will depart in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh outpouring. Fresh outpouring of your spirit upon Sister Veronica. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Give me for your hand. Mighty God, I thank you for this couple, Mary and Oma. Lord, where you have brought them, Lord, you are ordering their steps. You are bringing order out of chaos. And God says, no weapon, because there are weapons that are being formed against you. But no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you will be condemned right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you will put a hedge. You know what I hear the Lord say? There's a hedge around you, but that hedge has been breached. The hedge around you has been breached, and so the enemy is getting in. But that hedge needs to be intact. And so God says, examine yourselves, examine yourselves before the Lord. 
Examine yourselves. To encounter your love. Mighty God. Your love. You are able to do all things. Lord, you are already at work in their lives. But the enemy is trying. The enemy is relentless. So right now, I pull down every stronghold. Every attack of the enemy against their lives. We destroy. We nullify the works of the enemy against them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you will restore that hedge. That hedge of protection. We cover them. We cover the baby in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will send forth your angels to encamp around them, protect them in their going out and in their coming in, oh mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. enemy will try to bring you into an accident so I want you to cover yourself and your family every time you get into that car to drive cover yourself cover your family cover that vehicle mighty God right now we cover that vehicle in the blood of Jesus we declare that no plan of the enemy will come to pass we destroy every plan of the enemy to bring about accident and incident in the life of Brother Nari and his family. No accident shall come to pass in your life. We cover that vehicle right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. And mighty God, I thank you that you have given your angels charge over him and that vehicle to protect them at all times. In the mighty name of Jesus. And right now, every spirit of heaviness, every spirit that has come to harass, to bring stress, to bring worry, we bind and destroy those spirits. We drive them out in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the peace and the favor of God rest and abide upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the peace and the favor of God rest and abide upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are not here by chance this morning. God says that this was a word that you needed to hear. There's a word and there's a prophetic word that is being released into your life even now. God says today is the beginning of a new day. as a new season coming into your life. A season of favor. A season of purpose. God says all of the crooked paths are being straightened, are coming into alignment right now. All of the crooked pathways are being straightened right now. But God says He has a special assignment for you, a special work. Maybe something that God has already spoken to you, has already laid upon your heart, you may have laid it down because of all the things that is happening in your family, in your life you put it on the back burner God says it's time to take it up, it's time to press forward it's time to arise that thing that God laid upon your heart sister that thing that God spoke to you about and you know that it was God He says now is the time now is the time to arise God says, put up your loins and prepare yourself for action. 
there is a new season of action there is a new season of purpose that is coming into your life and into your experience God says stand and see all of the obstacles all of the things that was hindering you that was blocking you God says I am making an open door an open pathway for you to walk he says here is the door walk through it walk through it walk through that door in the mighty name of Jesus father I pray that there will be a spirit of acceleration a spirit of breakthrough that is going to rest upon her. a spirit of courage a spirit of might in the mighty name of Jesus and so I release you right now into your purpose into your destiny into the way that the Lord has ordained and God says fear not fear not he says I've heard your cry I've heard your prayer I am bringing order into chaos that's the word of the Lord order is coming into your life into your family and so we release that word right now in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus Hallelujah. And Sister Natalie, you know what I hear the Lord say? I hear the Lord say that you are like Martha. There are many things that are on your mind. There are many things that are on your heart. But God says there is one thing, one thing that is needful. And that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. God says, cast all of your cares. All, all, not some, all, all of your cares, all of your burdens. Put it on him. Put it on him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. For the spirit of In the mighty name of Jesus. God is going to do some awesome things. Awesome things in your life. A new season is dawning, Sister Natalie. A new season for the spirit of the Lord. And God says, You see these hands? You see these hands? These are anointed the hands. Could I get some oil for Sister Natalie's hands? God says there's a new assignment that is coming. For the spirit of the Lord. That He's gonna put these hands to work, Sister Natalie. These hands have been anointed for a special purpose. You have many talents and giftings that the Lord has given to you. And he says there is a season coming where he's going to put these hands to work. God says all of your needs will be met. He's going to meet your needs. He's going to provide. There's a season of abundance. A season of increase coming into your life, Sister Natalie. The God of divine connections going to make some divine connections and these hands there's going to be a demand for the skills that these hands can provide let it be so Lord in the mighty name of Jesus let it be so in Jesus name hallelujah father we give you praise we give you praise Lord for the spirit brother Kevin God says he's not finished with you still has things for you to do he still has places for you to go in the mighty name of Jesus so God I pray that you will open these eyes open these eyes Lord even as you said to Nathaniel and he will see the heavens open God says you will see the heavens open and you will see angels ascending and descending on the son of man Open his spiritual eyes. Lord, give him an encounter with the supernatural God. The God of breakthroughs. In the mighty name of Jesus. I release you into your purpose. And into your destiny. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Father. To encounter your love. We give you praise. Your love. So we give you praise. form of bondage God says there is there is a plan of the enemy to keep you back to keep you tied to keep you in bondage and you know the experience has been one of stops and starts but God says he's taking you forward 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 that's the word for you god says go forward stop looking back stop looking back and go forward so everything that binds everything that mitigates we sever right now everything that ties we sever right now in the name of jesus and lord you see her desire is for that relationship with that significant other to be restored. Lord, I pray for him right now. I pray, Lord, that you will bring about salvation in his life. I call for repentance and renewal in his life. Lord, I pray, Father, that you will open her spiritual eyes. And you will give her a spiritual encounter. No more stops and starts. No more stops and starts. No more hesitance. But there is going to be a purpose, a renewal, an effervescence. Let your spirit fall fresh upon her, Lord. Break through all of the resistance, all of the shackles. I break every shackle off of your life right now every chain and i lose you i lose you in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus saying that there has been a situation there has been a situation that not many people know about it's something that is kind of on the back burner but yet it's at the forefront of your mind you try to ignore it you try not to take it on but it's there not many people know about it And you feel that you've been disappointed. You've been let down. And you're crying internally. There's a pain. God says, I see all things. I see that pain. I see the situation. I see the wrongdoing. What people have said. What people have done. And God says, I am here to heal. I'm here to heal. There's a deep-seated pain and not many people know about. But there's a balm in Gilead. There's a balm. God is able to heal. He's able to soothe. And God is able to take you beyond that pain, beyond that situation, beyond that circumstance. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be a release, Lord, of your spirit to heal. Heal in the mighty name of Jesus. That situation, that circumstance, whatever it is, Lord, you can put your finger on that situation. And Lord, God says, I'm going to use that 
very situation to catapult you into your purpose into your destiny mighty God we give you praise I thank you Lord I thank you Lord that you are opening a new door a door that did not exist before you are opening a door for your sister to walk through a door that is beyond the pain a door that is beyond the hurt that is beyond the disappointment God says I'm opening a new door there's a new day dawning even now let it be so in the mighty name of Jesus God says there is a door that has been opened up walk through it in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name let it be so in Jesus name let us put our hands together for the Lord hallelujah So Father, we thank you that you are sufficient for all things. I lift up Joanne. Joanne is dealing with cancer. Lord, you are able to do all things. I send the word of healing to Joanne right now. I curse cancer from the very roots i command cancer in her body to dry up and to die all of those cancer cells i command you to go into remission right now cancer that has metastasized that has spread i command you to stop that spread and go into remission right now in jesus name i command those cells I command new life into those cells in her body. New life in Jesus' name. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Mighty God, I pray that your spirit will encounter Joanne. Give her an encounter with you, God. In Jesus' name. Lord, I lift up your daughter. Lord, she's just buried her sister. Lord, you see, you see, your word says that you are touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Mighty God, I pray that you will be the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That you will heal her hurting heart right now. In the name of Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, I invite you to fall fresh. Fall fresh, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon her. Comfort, Lord. You are the God of all comfort. Comfort, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch her, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. The evidence is Hallelujah. I anoint these eyes in the name of Jesus. I command the eyes to be restored, to be made whole. All symptoms of blurriness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I command these eyes to be recreated in the very sockets. Be healed in Jesus' name every part of the eye be healed in the mighty name of Jesus I release the strength of God upon you right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed be restored be made whole right now in the mighty name of Jesus spirit of the sovereign Lord move upon her right now in 
Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Could we give the Lord a round of applause? Hallelujah. We're going to wait on you for the tithes and the designated offerings. Praise the Lord.